confident to then give us back because I think that y'all have a wealth of knowledge and a lot of golden nuggets to share with us. I regret all of y'all as men as much as I do my man here. I regret all of y'all as men. I regret all of y'all as men. I regret all of y'all as men as much as I do my man here. All right. You sit here well, are you going to let? All right. All right. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. All right, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rachakwadash. All right, Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father and the Holy Tongue. All right, Yahweh Shai is the true name of the King and Savior of Israel, and Rachakwadash is the Holy Spirit, which is the Comforter. All right, I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for leading by example in these last days. And uh, shalom to the hopeful elect, okay? Uh, this lesson is going to be based on a uh, an experience, I'll call it that, an experience at camp yesterday. We had a, uh, a lost Jake come up with his woman, his so-called woman, who was completely out of order as usual. But what was special about this situation is that this woman had complete mind control over this Jake and you could see the look on his face he was completely defeated he he was trapped he was lost he didn't know what to do he was he was just completely under the rule of this this morbidly obese demonic neck rolling out of control entity that we know is the American black woman and you know before I get into what happened I just want to give a quick background these people walked up this couple she wanted to deal at first, but then, you know, brothers were like, look, we, this is your man. We're going to deal with your man. This is 1 Corinthians 14 and 34. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. And if, if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. Now, Obviously, the Christian church doesn't believe in the Bible at all. They don't adhere to this at all. But we here at Great Millstone, we actually try to adhere to this. Anytime women come up, first thing we ask them is, if, do they have a man? If so, we don't deal with them. This woman came up with her man. Her man was standing right there. So obviously, brothers didn't want to deal with her in front of a man. And so she, she set off on the side with this dude for like, I don't know, five, ten minutes, basically coaching him and coercing him on what to say because she she couldn't deal with us directly so she had to speak through him so she was like she's pointing her finger at his face saying well look you you ask this question you ask it like this and you duh, duh, duh. she's like she's lecturing him like she's talking to him like a little boy like this this is a grown man with a beard she's talking to him like like this is her son all right at one point a brother had to ask him is this your woman because she was she was talking to him crazy like and he was letting her so we were like what the what is this this is cra this is crazy and you know it's crazy because normally when you see jake in these these relationships the dynamic between the man and the woman is completely out of order is by default by default the average so-called negro relationship in america is completely out of order these so-called black women they have a mother-son relationship with their husbands and that's the norm that's average so for this situation for us to all look at each other and look at them it was that extreme to where something out of order was even further off balance than it normally is. This was this was witchcraft, honestly. This she she had this man on some type of, of mind control. So finally he walks up, he asks a question, and the brothers start to answer, and she she loses it. She she grabs his arm. That's not that's not the question. That's not how I told you to ask it. That's not a she she's like she's really talking super greasy to this dude. That's not what I told you to say. That that's not my question. And we're all looking at each other and we're looking at them like, man, this, man, this is crazy. So we realized very quickly that this is going nowhere. So the brother asked the man, the, the so-called man, I have to put that in, in air quotes, the, the male. The brothers asked the male if, you know, if we could deal with his woman directly. And he was like, yeah. So the first thing she says is, I think all of you have a wealth of knowledge and a, a lot of golden nuggets to share with us. I revere all of y'all as men, as much as I do my man here. And, you know, as soon as she said that, I knew, you know, this was going to turn south. It's like, it's just like when someone starts off a sentence with, with all due respect, you already know 
immediately following that statement is going to be complete and total disrespect, okay? When, when you see a North American black woman start off a sentence with, uh, I respect you as brothers, I respect y'all kings, I respect you as a man, I revere y'all as strong men. Anytime you hear the North American black woman speaking like that, you know immediately she's about to undermine your manhood, insult your intelligence, challenge your position, or some combination of the three. She is about to uh, completely show her ass, all right? When she starts off with calling you a uh, king or uh, we should build, all of this pro-black nonsense, you know immediately she's going to come in with, with feminism, all right? That's the default that the nigger woman is used to. She doesn't know any other way. She really, she's completely out of her element dealing with actual men. She has no point of reference. There's no man in the household. There's no man. She's not in a relationship with a man. Okay, she doesn't know how to be a woman and coexist in a, a harmonious dialogue or interaction with a real man. She's completely out of her element. So when we get the okay from our man to deal with her, you know, the elder brother Yaquab in the camp, he's dealing with her cordially, uh, respectfully. He doesn't call her out of her name. He doesn't say anything that could be remotely misconstrued as disrespect. He's talking to her, you know, uh, peacefully. Like, scriptures say, uh, let all things be done decently in order. He's talking to her orderly. And the look that she's giving him is, like, complete disdain. Like, nigga, who the fuck do you think you are? How, how dare you? How dare you correct me, nigga? I'm an educated black woman, nigga. Like, the disdain, the absolute disgust that she has on her face while talking to this brother is is palpable, okay? It you could you could feel the hatred that she had for being corrected by some lowly niggas in her mind. Like, oh my god, like, how how dare you correct the educated black woman. Who do you who do you guys think you are? You know, she started off by saying she she had reverence for us and she revered us, but very little time revealed that she has hatred for us. This is the same thing with Esau. The self-proclaimed white man, he'll come up with all these smooth words. Ah, I love you guys. Oh, hey, you guys are reading the Bible? Look, I don't see color. I, I love everybody. Slavery was in the past. God so loved the world. I love you. I love you all. But as soon as you bring out the scriptures, it becomes immediately apparent that he hates us, okay? He hates our guts. And Eve is no different than her father, the devil, like Yahushai said in St. John, the 8th chapter, the 44th verse. All right, the self-proclaimed white man and the so-called black woman are united in the same spirit, the spirit of wanting you Israelite men to never come back into power ever again, ever. All right, that's the spirit that they're in. All you have to do to prove that is just go into the scriptures. You don't have to call them names. You don't have to argue back and forth. All you have to do is read the Bible, and it'll prove what they're about, all right? As it is written in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, the twelfth verse, for the word of Yahweh is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So this word is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And what are the true thoughts and intents of the black woman's heart? To see you continue forever in a low estate. All right, she sees you coming back to your royal status as a threat to her, okay? She doesn't see us as a people coming up together. She might say that, but when you explain to her what true royalty is, which is patriarchy, you see immediately that she wants no part of Kwame Asherala, all right? Our nation rising together and Esau going down means no more women's rights, no more women having a say, no more being a slut and a whore with multiple sex partners, no more eating shrimp, pork, lobster, and other abominations, no more hanging out with sodomites, no more running her goddamn mouth, all right? The American black woman would rather our people stay in slavery for another 400 years just so she can continue being a slut and getting a plate of the red lobster, all right? That's how much she hates us. She would rather see us as a people stay down just so she can have the right to disrespect us, to put us on child support, and to continue being a, a total whore in the sight of the heathen. That's the condition that we're in. Our women do not want us to rise as a people and, and they don't revere us. That's, if you can't see that, just click on any Hebrew Israelite video. It, it doesn't even have to be Great Millstone. Just any Hebrew, anytime you see Israelite men coming back into their, their right mind, their nationality, 
proclaiming the truth of the Bible, you, you can clearly see the so-called white man and the so-called black woman are united in wanting to keep us down, man. At the absolute bottom, powerless, okay? That's their true intent, all right? That's the, the, uh, the thoughts and intents of their heart, like the scriptures say. There was even one point when, um, I think it's, it's like an hour and 47 minutes into the video, she told a nigga to back up and, and she moved her hand like she was talking to a servant. Then he backed up just like a servant. It was crazy. And it made me think of this. This is, uh, this is First Edris 4 and 26. Yea, many there be that have run out of their wits for women and become servants for their sakes. Many also have perished and erred and sinned for women. And that's exactly what happened, man. This Jake had completely run out of his wits and became her servant, man. He was literally her servant. Like, she could have snapped her fingers, said, jump, boy, you know, spin, fetch. She she had total control over this Jake. And that's why I started with the Isaiah 3. As for my people, children are their oppressors and women rule over them. She was ruling over this man. It was, his body language was completely defeated. The look in his eye, he, there was one point the camera doesn't pick this up, but there was actually one point where he made eye contact with me and he was he gave me this look like, brother, help me, please help me. Like, I, I can't explain it, but it's like, it was like a hostage trying to make a signal. He, he actually, he looked like an animal in a zoo that was giving me the look to, to free him, man. It was crazy. You know, I'm, I'm just reading the scriptures. I can't, you know, Yahweh Shai is the healer. He's the savior. All right, you gotta, you have to pray to him. I can't, I can't physically give you the power to, to, to break free from this woman, man. But he's looking in my eye like, Amawai, Baba Kusha, Azaria, Azaria, Baba Kusha. You know, I mean, I'm sure he can't speak Hebrew, but, you know, through the spirit, man, his eyes, he was he was crying out in the last one I could dodge, man. He was, he, he was in pain, man. He, he just didn't know what to say, but he was groaning. Like, hey, what's that scripture uh, in Romans? Uh, groanings, which cannot be, let me, let me see if I can find it. Uh, this is Romans, yeah, Romans 8 and 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And that's exactly what, what happened, man. He he was groaning things that which could not be uttered because he was standing in front of his master, all right, the so-called black woman. She had, she had total rule over his spirit. And he was just, man, you could just see the look. I had never seen anything like that. You know, you see... You see Jake in these relationships and, you know, Jake is a simp and, you know, the nigga woman, she's completely out of control. You see that every day, but not to this extreme. He was just, he looked ready to give up the ghost, man. He, he was done, man. It was crazy. And she started off by saying she she reveres us, okay? And I, I just want to prove through the scriptures that that's impossible, all right? According to the actual definition of reverence, these, these American black women, they do not reverence us. And, and I just want to get into what actual reverence is and what it what it's supposed to be, all right? So when you go to the dictionary, the first definition for reverence is deep respect for something or someone. And even though deep respect is etymologically a good definition for reverence, today's modern concept of respect really doesn't do the word justice. So I clicked on show more and uh, the first thing I see is archaic, a gesture indicative of respect a bow or curtsy and it's funny that this is listed under archaic because actual reverence is archaic all right the the reverence that a woman is supposed to have for a man in this society is totally archaic and it's the spirit because when you go into the scriptures people call the, the so-called old testament they call it archaic or antiquated or or old-fashioned but true reverence involves bowing okay when you bow to a king or right, when a subject bows to his master a woman bows to her husband, which your husband is your Lord, all right, according to the scriptures, that's what true reverence is. And it goes back to, uh, I believe it's First Kings, the first chapter. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, this is First Kings 1 and 15. And what you have to understand here is King David is, he's already in his bedroom with his newest wife, all right? Uh, Abishag is a young, beautiful woman. They, the scriptures say, King David's subjects searched the land to find one of the most beautiful women for him, man. So this isn't some, you know, dusty broad, man. He's he's in his room getting ministered by a young, beautiful woman, and his wife walks in. And let's see, let's see how she responds. 
This is 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 15. And Bathsheba, which is King David's wife, went in unto the king into the chamber, and the king was very old. And Abishag the Shunammite ministered unto the king. And Bathsheba bowed and did obeisance unto the king. So you can see here, King David is being served by his, his newest, youngest wife, and his other wife comes in and bows down to him. All right, that is an example of reverence. Okay, that is true reverence. And verse 31, uh, then Bathsheba bowed with her face to the earth and did reverence to the king and said, let my Lord King David live forever. All right, now this is a, an archaic example of reverence. Okay, this is what's under the definition of, of archaic, but really through the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, this is what's coming back to the earth. All right, the house of David is being risen back up. And with that comes that, that reverence, that archaic spirit, that ancient way of life, that ancient regal patriarchal way of looking at the world. All right, the Most High is raising up the house of David as it is written. So if the house of David is being risen back up, then that means the reverence that the men of the Lord had is also going to come back to the earth, okay? Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai is putting that ancient spirit of manhood back on his men, and this level of reverence is coming back real soon. All you so-called black and Hispanic women that don't want to get down with the program, hey, that's cool. Somebody has to be the two-thirds. Somebody has to die in those FEMA camps. Somebody has to starve to death. Okay, the Most High isn't going to save everybody. So y'all rebellious women, you have to fill the lot of that multitude that's going to perish, okay? It's nothing personal. However, to the women that, that are looking forward to being in that royal state, bowing down to a king, and all you Israelite women that are, are quiet and humble, and you're looking forward to seeing your nation rise to that, that regal state again, a lot of y'all are going to be saved, okay? You can read about that in Isaiah, the fourth chapter, okay? It's straight to the point. Our, our nation is going to be made beautiful again. The men the women, the children, all right, starting with the men of the Lord, the 144,000, but really, as it is written, my people shall all be righteous, Isaiah the 60th chapter, all, all of Israel is going to be righteous, all of Israel is going to be royal, the men are going to be reverenced by the women, everything is going to be in perfect order, all right, if you don't want to see that, if you don't want to be a part of that, then you got to go, all right, and you are going to go, all right, the Most High is not holding back prophecy for the nigger woman. Now, I want to get the, uh, the etymology of the word reverence from Latin reverentia, all respect, to fear, to be afraid of, okay? The prefix re, which we know that means back or again, and verere means to stand in awe or fear. So it's just like the word respect. You know, if you're if you're subscribed to Apostle Gabar, uh, GMS Walk and Talk, hey, he goes into the word respect a lot. All right, respect mean, is re, which means back or again, and spec means to look like spectacle or spectate, all right? When you respect someone, you're looking back on the things that they've done, the things that they're capable of doing. To, to truly respect someone, you have to be able to look back at their past, okay? To reverence someone, likewise, you have to be able to look back with fear, okay? Now, the so-called black woman in America, she can't reverence us because she doesn't look back to when we were in power. She looks back to, to slavery, to uh, to you coon niggas, all right, Tyler Perry, uh, cross-dressing niggas, uh, to rappers. That that's what she looks to when she sees the so-called American black man. She doesn't she doesn't have a reference. She she has no point of reference to us being an authority, especially this this current generation. We're we're now three generations removed from a point where our households were ruled by men. So these women have no they have no reverence. All right, now I want to get the. Uh, the scriptural definition for reverence because even though the etymology is stronger than the denotation the scriptural definition is, is even more to the point this is Leviticus chapter 19 verse 30 ye shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary I am Yahweh all right so you can see here reverence is synonymous with obedience and fearing the Heavenly Father all right to further prove that this is Psalms 89 verse 7 the Most High is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. All right, so you see the, the biblical definition for reverence involves a, a moral fear, all right, a fear of, of retribution or authority. All right, let's get the Hebrew. All right, the Hebrew word here is Yerah, Strong's H3372, Yerah, all right, to fear 
to fear, morally to revere, causatively to frighten, a fright, to make or be afraid, to make dreadful, to put in fear, okay, terribleness, to be afraid, to make afraid, to stand in awe of, to be awed, reverence, to be fearful, be dreadful, to cause astonishment and awe, to inspire reverence or godly fear, all right, to make afraid, to terrify. All right, so that's the Hebrew word for reverence, all right? The the feeling that we're supposed to have towards the Heavenly Father is the, the feeling that a woman is supposed to have towards her husband. All right, let's prove that. This is Ephesians 5 and 33. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Now, this is the New Testament. So this isn't in Hebrew. This is in Greek. Let's see what the Greek word for reverence is here in Ephesians. All right, the word is phobio. Now, before I even read the definition of phobia, we know phobia is a fear. When you have a phobia of something, you're afraid of it. Apostle Paul is saying, see that the wife reverence her husband. Phobia, fear, all right? Now, the Greek here is Strong's G5399. To put to flight by terrifying, to scare away, to put to flight, to flee, to fear, to be afraid, to be struck with fear, to be seized with alarm of those startled by strange sights or occurrences, of those struck with amazement, to fear, to be afraid of one, to fear, i.e. hesitate to do something for fear of harm. Wait a minute, wait a minute. To hesitate to do something for fear of harm, to venerate, to treat with deference or referential obedience. That's what, that's what the Bible is saying that the Israelite wife is supposed to have for her husband, all right? You're supposed to hesitate to do something for fear of harm. Now, in this society, the self-proclaimed white man has made it completely illegal, illegal for men to have authority in their households. Really, all men, but specifically you Israelite men. You Israelites consist of you, you people of so-called Negro and Native Indian descent, all right? You, the men of our nation, the 12 tribes of Israel, it is illegal for you to have authority in your household, all right? So... How can your woman have reverence for you? How can she hesitate to do something for fear of harm if the self-proclaimed white man has made it illegal for you to harm her? He actually, he'll take your children away from you if you hit your children, but yet it's legal for him to shoot your children. All right, he'll make it illegal for you to put hands on your woman, but he can arrest your woman. He could tackle your woman to the ground in your house in front of you, tackle her, throw her in the back of a car, beat her, all right, punch her ribs and throw, in a, and, and throw in a jail cell. But then he'll turn around, look you in the face and tell you that violence doesn't solve anything. Violence is never the answer. The self-proclaimed white man is a hypocrite, all right? He's, he's the Edomite, according to the Bible. He's from the seed of Esau, all right? That's his actual biblical nationality. He's made it illegal for you so-called Negro and Latino men to be reverenced by your woman. Meanwhile, he has a monopoly on violence. It's, it's perfectly legal for him to kill you, kill your woman, and kill your children. All right, in the name of, of state, uh, government, as long as he has a badge, or really he doesn't need a badge. He just needs to, uh, to, to feel afraid. All right, I was afraid for my life. I had to kill this guy. It's okay for him to be reverenced. But you? You? Oh, hell no. You you can't be reverenced. All right, that's, that's completely out of the question. All right, this is St. Mark chapter 3, verse 27. No man can enter into the strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. All right, and that's exactly what happened to the Israelite household, man. The nation of Israel, the, the strong man was bound, all right? When you take the head of the household out of the house, which the head of the household is the man. When you read 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, the head of the woman is the man, and the head of the man is Yahweh Shai. All right, when you take the head out of the household, you basically, now you can indoctrinate the woman, you can indoctrinate the child with dogma and philosophy that benefits you. It doesn't benefit the nation, doesn't benefit the children, all right? We're not educated in this society. The word educate means to draw out. We're indoctrinated in this society, all right? You're, you're basically put in a position where your woman is looking at you like, what, what do I need you for, all right? This is Proverbs 21, verse 4 and high look and a proud heart and the plowing of the wicked is sin 
all right and really Eve has a high look obviously a proud heart and everything the so-called black woman has in this society comes from the plowing of the wicked okay her education her living assistance welfare wick child support everything that affords her the comfortable life that she has is from Esau all right it's from his wicked system it's built on the backs and oppression of the Israelite man and even the rest of the heathen men around the world Esau created a world economy based on rape robbery oppression and stealing the herbs natural resources all right and and heaping it all to himself and then in this system that he's created his number one pit bull slash lapdog is the so-called black woman all right who is really a double agent because she'll act like she's with us she'll act like she's on our side she'll, she'll act like she's being oppressed too which she is but at the same time she's coming against us like we're her enemy we didn't we didn't bring you over here on slave ships we didn't beat your language out of you and call you african we didn't give you this horrible diet that has your arms all wobbly your ankles messed up giving you diabetes we aren't shooting up your children with vaccines giving them autism we we didn't do any of that all right we didn't create a feminist movement and tell you that you don't need a family to be happy who did these things who did all these things the self-proclaimed white man esau all right but see eve never in a million years would eve walk up to a group of self-proclaimed white men and start screaming at them talking over them demanding that they answer her uh telling them what, what she knows because she has a degree and it, this type of beast-like unruly behavior is only reserved for you israelite men why because she doesn't revere us she doesn't reverence us all right and the, the woman yesterday man at camp man she she was just she was typical man she was the typical american black woman now a black woman will come on this video and say well, we're not all like that you're generalizing us you know uh she'll say anything except well yeah that that is true that's me i need to repent or that was me but i repented brother you know it's it's always somebody else's fault and this is why the majority of them are about to die all right when all hell breaks loose there's not going to be any excuses all right you're either going to be covered by the blood of your or you're going to get put to death and this is micah 7 verse 10 then she that is mine enemy shall see it and shame shall cover her which said unto me where is yahweh thy power mine eyes shall behold her now she shall be trotted down as the mire of the streets and that's exactly what's going to happen all right these women really none of them have a fear of the heavenly father especially the ones that go to church every week they actually worship a satanic deity called uh, jesus christ or or cesare bozier or serapis christus all right he goes by by several names but ultimately he's satan all right he's not the messiah of the bible he's not the expressed image of the heavenly father he is he's the devil okay and yahweh said in matthew the seventh chapter you'll you'll know a tree by its fruits what are the fruits of jesus christ what are the fruits of christianity all right feminism democracy disobedience unruly behavior whores sluts loud mouth black women all right this is what the christian church has done to our people there's no in 2018 you can't argue that christianity has done our people good it's just you can't make that argument all right you jake's still going to these churches you jake's still being led around by your women a lot of y'all are going to die behind these women man if you can't stand up to your woman now when there's food in the stores and there's order in society and you can you could turn on the tv and see the game you can go to work like nothing if you can't stand up to your woman now how are you going to respond when that loudmouth, obese black woman has gone 24 hours with no food and she's screaming at you at the top of her lungs to go get something to eat? Okay, the so-called American black woman is not prepared for a famine. She can't fast for 72 hours. A lot of them can't fast for 72 minutes. And you're going to be shackled up with this beast when the economy collapses. What does that mean for you? All you jakes being led by your woman in 2018, you're going to be put to death. Okay, the mark of the beast which is the RFID chip, Esau is going to make that mandatory. How are you going to react when you need that chip to eat and your woman wants to take the chip? She's going to take the chip and she's going to chip your children. And what are you so-called black men going to do? You're going to take the chip too. Why? Because you're weak. You have no spine. You have no backbone, no virility, no authority, no self-confidence as a man. Whatever program your woman lays down, you go right along with it. Your woman rules over you, not Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And since you want to make a god out of the black woman, you're going to die right along with her, all right? And that Jake yesterday, man, 
he was he was just crouching down like an old lion, you know, like the scriptures say. Uh, he was just totally neutered. Like I said, he he looked at me in the eye and gave me this look like, please help me, bro. She's like this all the time. I don't I don't know what to do. No man is supposed to be led by his woman. That is completely out of order. We're men, all right. We're Israelite men. So when you see these simp's, you get vexed. You get vexed in the spirit. Like outside of Esau. The major reason these women feel so comfortable disrespecting men is because you simps allow it to happen. When you simp, it doesn't just affect you and your weak ass household. It sends a message to your woman, your daughters, and every female in the vicinity that this is okay. This is acceptable behavior. Disrespecting a man is cool. It's all right to be disobedient. It's all right to blaspheme the scriptures. It's all right to dress like a whore. No matter what these women do, there's a a, a multitude of simps ready to just bow down basically these niggas reverence hoes man instead of these women reverencing righteous men these niggas reverence whores man that's completely out of order and your behavior and your behavior is a a major contributing factor to the downfall of our people man there's even a count in the scriptures uh i believe it's the first chapter of esther basically you had a heathen king he gave an order to the queen. The queen disobeyed publicly, all right? And so everybody around the king was like, look, you you gotta do something, man. You you can't just let that slide, all right? These are heathen. Wait, let me see if I can find it. This is, this is Esther chapter one, verse 15. What shall we do unto the queen Vashti according to law? Because she have not performed the commandment of the king Ahasuerus by the chamberlains. And Memukan answered before the king and the princes, Vashti the queen have not done wrong to the king only. She have not done wrong to the king only, but also to all the princes and to all the people that are in all the provinces of the king Ahasuerus. The scriptures say this woman being disobedient to the king, when you publicly disobey your husband, you are disrespecting all the men of the nation. Why? Because a kingdom is a patriarchy. One woman that's out of order is sending a message to all the women. It says that, wait, I think it's going to say that in the next verse. Uh, verse 17, for this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women. Yep, next verse. Uh, so that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes when it shall be reported. So once you make it cool for one woman to disrespect one man, it's, it sends a like a shockwave out to all other women. Like, okay, this is cool behavior. I can do this. I don't have to obey my husband now. Well, look, the queen didn't listen to the king, so I don't have to listen to my husband. Let's see, let's see how these heathen handled it. These are he keep in mind, these are heathen. All right, these are these are not even people given the laws of the Most High, but they're they're somewhat in their right mind. They're in a a, a ruling class mentality. Verse eighteen. Likewise, shall the ladies of Persia and Media say this day unto the, all the king's princes which have heard of the deed of the queen? Thus shall they arise too much contempt and wrath. If it please the king, let there go a royal commandment from him, and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes, that it be not altered, that Vashti come no more before the king Ahasuerus, and let the king give her royal estate unto another that is better than she. And when the king's decree which he shall make shall be published throughout all his empire, for it is great, all the wives shall give their husbands honor, both great and small. Now. These are heathen, and they, they understood order. How much more the chosen people of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai? If a heathen understands patriarchy, if a heathen understands that a man is not supposed to simp under any circumstances, if a heathen understands the ripple effect and the consequences of letting these, these women slide, how much more an Israelite? No man, especially an Israelite man, should be subservient to a woman. The Most High said, gird up thy loins like a man, like a man. But you simps let your woman wear the pants, and she has them girded all the way up, man. No man should be docile and subservient to a woman, man. It's bad enough we have to kowtow to Esau at work, but you simp jakes actually go home and bow down even further to a woman. Here it is, you go to work every day and bow down to the self-proclaimed white man every day at work, then go home and prostrate to a woman who is the weaker vessel. How does that work? Here it is, the same woman who wants you to bend her over and take charge in the bedroom, this same woman is giving you orders. So she's totally submissive when it comes to the most intimate, vulnerable part of her day. But then she's going to get up, put on some pants, 
zip up a zipper, which which that's total madness, all right? The law says a woman shall not wear that which pertaineth to a man. So how is it that your woman is wearing the pants in a relationship when according to the Heavenly Father, she's not even supposed to own a pair of pants at all? This place has to go, everything is out of order here. The women, the children, you jakes, all right, all you Israelite men that have accepted this Western culture as a way of life, you need death, okay? You need to repent, really, but if you don't repent, that's what you're gonna get. You're gonna get death, you're gonna be destroyed. All right, the Heavenly Father is bringing back a righteous patriarchy, man. The kingdom of heaven is, is a kingdom, okay? We're a nation of kings and priests, all right, period. Now, this is Sirach chapter 26, verse 24. A dishonest woman contempted shame, but an honest woman will reverence her husband. An honest woman will reverence her husband. So basically, these hoes ain't honest, man. That's that's basically what we have. We have dishonest women that contempt of shame, all right? Scriptures also tell you a shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. So really, the so-called black woman in America is nothing but a dog, all right? And we know what a female dog is. This is Isaiah chapter 32, verse 9. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. Many days and years shall ye be troubled, ye careless women. For the vintage shall fail, the gathering shall not come. Tremble, ye women that are at ease. Be troubled, ye careless ones. Strip you and make you bare. And this is exactly what's going to happen, man. All these women are at ease because of Esau and his madness. All right, he's, he's basically created an artificial society where where women actually believe in their minds that they don't need men now meanwhile every house that they live in is built by a man the car that they drive to work built by a man all right the building that they work in built by a man all right all these buildings are maintained you know the plumbers the electricians the construction workers the people building the road this whole society is built and maintained by men but esau has it set up to where a woman actually believes that she doesn't need a man so here it is you have the labor the ingenuity and, and the energy of men is extracted by the state to create this artificial system for women in which they completely disdain and look down on the men that that are provided for them, all right? Instead of being provided for directly by their husband, they're being provided for collectively by the state. So they have a reverence for the state, which is controlled by Esau, the self-proclaimed white man. They have a reverence for the state, but they have absolutely no respect for the average man or even their own husband. And it's sickening, all right? The Heavenly Father is going to destroy this place, man. That's why the scripture says, rise up, ye women that are at ease. You're at ease here, all right? You're not, the women in mass are not persecuted for having children that they can't afford, all right? They're given money for having children that they can't afford. Women in general are not being persecuted in the school system, all right? Western education is molded around the female temperament, all right? Women are coddled at school and at work, all right? Women are at ease here. But it says, many days and years shall you be troubled, ye careless women. The vintage shall fail. And that's happening right now. This economy is failing. America doesn't have much longer, all right? We're on, the, we're on the doorsteps of World War III. And when all hell breaks loose, these women are going to realize exactly what they are. All right, and that's when Isaiah 32 is going to come into play. This is Isaiah 32, verse 2. And a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind, and a covert from the tempest, as rivers of water in a dry place, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. All right, and that's the time we're coming into. A man of the Lord is gonna become a hiding place and a covert from the tempest, meaning when all hell breaks loose and people are wondering where their next meal is gonna come from, how they're gonna stay alive, what, what's gonna to happen tomorrow, the men of the Lord are gonna be protected by Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Starting with this wisdom and knowledge, which is gonna be the stability of our times, but it's also gonna manifest into physical deliverance and these women are going to see it all right a lot of them are going to seek that covert from the tempest and these women are going to be looking for for righteous men and a lot of them are going to find death okay that's just how it's going to go down all right it says as rivers of water in a dry place like if you if you're in a desert right you you've gone days without water and you see a river that's that's how it's going to be for these women that come across a man of the lord all right Brothers may have mercy on certain women, but the women that we have mercy on, they're going to be quiet, soft, feminine women, all right? These are going to be women that have repented and taken heed to the word. They're not going to be brute beasts. Women like the woman that we saw at camp yesterday, they're not going to make it, and her man's not going to make it. They're, they're just casualties, man. They're casualties in the, 
the the war the war on manhood the war on family all right they're they're just a, a casualty in this story man so if you come across this video you know i know a lot of you black women you know you might watch these videos with your your nose turned up your arms crossed and you know who are you to t you know hey repent okay repent while you have time the scriptures say seek the lord while he may be found it doesn't say correct the prophets. It doesn't say share your opinion on the comment board. I, I don't care. I could care less. Okay. Uh, just repent. All right. So I pray this lesson was edifying to the elect. All right. I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rechach Wadash, and uh, Shalom to the hopeful elect.